Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, reviewing Love Island, Australia, season six, episode 12. Before I get into it, please like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. So the episode starts with Dylan still telling Sophie she has nothing to worry about. And I'm not even gonna lie to you, for a split second, I almost believed him. I'm probably gonna be crying in 10 minutes. No, you won't, you won't. No, she'll be fine. She will be. It just sucks. I think we will be too. Trust you. Trust me. She's had chats like with loads of people here. No, I don't know. <laughs> really? Everyone's open here, including myself. I have to be open. I am open. To be honest with you, I didn't think that you guys were vibing me at all. So I was like, I'm sweet. I'm I vibe you. I really do, but I'm like, you know? Hypothetically, if you want to get to know me, you got to take that risk. Dylan is definitely giving mixed signals, but it's so murky because he hasn't been coupled up with Sophie for that long. And he has told her he's open to exploring and he is allowed to explore. So is she. She's the one who's just pigeonholing herself and is like, I only want to go for Dylan. I mean, is there anybody else in here who she's really checking for? Not anymore. Now that Zane, I think, has just made it clear that he's not gonna pursue things romantically, but he's free to explore. He is. The new girls are also intrigued by Taylor. Now, Taylor didn't think that they were checking for him, mainly because he's not really giving that energy like, okay, I'm open to it. And as the episode went on, I was a little bit confused by Taylor because in the beginning of the episode, it was giving, oh, you like me? Oh, I didn't know. But then it was like, no, I really like that girl. And I'm trying to like, let her know that I like her, but I don't want to like, let her know that I like her, but like, I like her. And I'm like, where's, where's this energy coming from? But anyways, yeah, it's, it's fair gang. I think that Kayla should stick with Zayn. I don't even see her and Taylor, aesthetically, they would look great, but I don't really see it for them. And then with Chrissy, I would like to see where things could go with her and Taylor. But that's not what's gonna happen. They get sent into the fireplace by Sophie Monk and there's a recoup no, coupling for the two new girls. Kayla picks Zane and Chrissy picks Dylan. Now I expected Dylan, but I still was like, damn it. You didn't wanna, you know, do something interesting, but Whatever. Now that means that Xanthi and Sophie are single. They are going to leave the villa to go on a date with Mercedes, who's ultimately going to pick who gets dumped. Mercedes? Mercedes, yes. Do you have a Mercedes? I don't, I don't. don't. How's the villa been? I'm like not huge on the gym. <laughs> I, I don't mind you not being a gym girly, okay? I don't, I don't mind. 28, yeah. okay. I'm an old man. Yeah, but I've always gone for older ones. <laughs> Have so. you? You are 100% my type. Am I? And so are you looking to settle down? I like, am. Okay. I am. Are so, you looking for something serious? Absolutely. Family orientated. Awesome. Um, super into gym. If I'm in the gym, I'm not out doing something stupid. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mercedes says he does not want to be in his mid-30s in the club still checking for girls i know way too many people who are still doing that but that's a story for another day um i guess apparently according to y'all he's been on like three different dating shows already he has no problem being a 28 year old going on three different dating shows so yeah he claims he's ready to find somebody settle down at some point in the future whatever whatever we'll have to see it to believe it because y'all said he won f boy island it doesn't get more toxic than that child. So with his conversation with Xanthi, I mean, her age was really showing. It just, the girl just needs a break. She needs to pause, collect herself, grow up a little bit and come back. Now, funnily enough, I didn't even realize that her and Sophie were so close in age, but Sophie carries herself just a smidge more mature, just a smidge, not by much, honestly, not by much. But her conversation was better. And um, ultimately he decides to couple up with Sophie. Now back at the villa, we have Dylan, who is moving different now that Sophie is not around. Now that you're good, you feel sad, you're yeah, happy? I'm good. I think I made the right decision. I hope you, I hope you think that. <laughs> you feel good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, vibes. Dylan's true colors definitely show when he's not being watched. He keeps saying, I'm not an F boy. I don't know why I get this reputation. Do you not see yourself? You talk one way to one girl, another way to another girl and act dumb when you're confronted by either party. Like, please be so for real, be so for real. Luckily for Sophie, she does have a lifeline now with Mercedes picking her. Is she going to capitalize on that? No, she's not. But anyways, Xanthi is officially dumped and I was expecting a meltdown, but she actually handled herself quite well. We got a little mini meltdown. Well done, you spoke so loud. That's Zane's shirt, he can have that Ew, back. should I throw it in the trash? Yeah, let's burn it. Can those girls fuck off? Hmm? Can those girls just leave? It's yeah, like, queen's cool. like, Yeah. I'm sorry, but she's, she's being quite childish about the whole thing. It's fucking Love Island. No, babe, you are not even my friends. You guys pay for this. I know, yeah, babe, of I know. You found something better in here, so... It's not better, it's just... It's kind of wrong. I know in the last video I said I was conflicted on who I would be okay with leaving, but I'm okay with Xanthi going at this point. Like the whole gym thing, it was exhausting for me. I'm sure it was exhausting for other people. Like, girl, it's, it's enough. This is overkill now, okay? Um, Zane was clearly exhausted as well. He literally said, you know, on the outside, I don't have to deal with somebody crying as much as, as she does. And if the person is crying, I would just call up her homegirl so they could deal with it. Wow. Um, wow. <laughs> like, it sucks that Xanthi had the experience that she had, but I hope that this is a learning experience for her. I hope that she can watch it back and gain some perspective. I'm kind of glad that Zane said some of the things that he said so that she could watch back and be like, this is the guy that I was crying over? Seriously? Yeah, girl. Yeah, yeah. She reminds me of Jess. Watching Jess both times because Jess on Love Island Australia was a mess. Then Jess on Love Island Games was a mess. But now she's in a relationship. I think she's still in a relationship. And she's like, yeah, I've, I've grown from Love Island. So I've learned a lot. I hope the same for Xanthi. After Xanthi's departure, Taylor and M have a conversation. And he tells her that logistically, it would make sense to go with somebody like Chrissy. However, he's not sure if there's a romantic vibe between them. And in this conversation, I was like, oh, okay, so he understands that he's compatible with Chrissy on paper, but that vibe, that thing is just not there for him. I'll be completely honest, I was a little bit worried. Like for me right now, there's nothing like romantic there. Like, mm. the, you know. I've seen you three having a combo up there. Yeah, I was keen as. I was like, our uh, conversation was a bit confusing for me as well, though. Why? Oh, no, we were both really interested in you, too. I'm like, I didn't pick that up Come at all. Come on. She probably didn't get an, as much green light from you than she did from Dylan. Well, you know, I am really good with them. Like, mm. things was up, because I am. Things are really good. Yeah, exactly. Good. Like, what's changed? What's happening? He sort of decided to drop these little hints. So initially, I thought that Taylor and Chrissy would not be each other's type physically. You know, it, it kind of seems like Chrissy likes a Dylan or a Steph or a Mercedes, if you catch my drift. And Taylor, I don't know, he just wasn't giving the impression that he was really into her like that. Like, yeah, they had a little vibe going, but he just wasn't giving that energy. And even in the conversation he had with M, it sounded like he acknowledged what it would look like logistically, but that thing, you know, that <clears throat> wasn't there for him. As the evening goes on, it's almost like he's regretting not putting on the moves more. And he's like, well, if she comes to me, then then I'll really, hold on. Cause he did the same thing with M the first time around. He told M like, well, if you come to me, then, then I'll indulge you and whatever. But he clearly wanted to talk to M a lot more than he let on. And then Alicia was tripping out being like, Okay, but you're making it seem like you're not keen, but obviously you're keen. I don't know if it's a matter of him just keeping his cards close to his chest. I don't know if it's that he actually is putting out mixed signals and he doesn't want to look like the bad guy because that's his reputation right now. I'm the good guy. I'm so nice. I'm so charming. I'm so friendly. And I believe it. I do. But the mask is slipping a little bit with him. It really is. So M is like, yeah, he said he, he doesn't really know if it's there romantically and I don't really think I have anything to worry about. You might, <laughs> you might. Cause when he talks to the guys, there's more interest than he's letting on. Like Taylor, what's your deal? Hmm? 
Luckily for him, I don't think that M is the type to kick off anyways. She doesn't give me that energy. It's like, well, if you're not for me, then you're not for me. I'm just going to move on to the next one. But still, don't do that. Don't do that. Just be more honest. Like, did he flat out lying? No, but I think he could have been more transparent about where he's at. So yeah, the next day we don't really see Chrissy talking to Taylor anyway, so I don't know if that's going to go anywhere, but he's interested. So as soon as she shows some kind of interest, I'm sure he's going to jump on that. As suspected, the women are telling Sophie what was going on between Dylan and Chrissy in her absence. I don't know what's up with Dylan. I don't know if he thinks that the women just keep everything to themselves. They're going to talk. Like holding her hand, like, are the you whole serious? time, never, never left her side. Well, they were so we cuddly, could... by the way, so in her. Oh, that's what so I wanted to He said, I just want you to trust me. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. He, he said, just told, trust um, me. What's her face? Chrissy, she made the right decision. Uh, what? Watch him cuddle and kiss in bed. Let him Sophie is realizing that Dylan is the F boy he fights so hard not to be seen as. And she's starting to think like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I'm putting, you know, so much effort in somebody who wouldn't do the same to me. Now, is that going to deter her? No, it's not. It's not. And I'm here like, I'm glad that she's self-aware enough to know that this is the type of guy that she goes for and it rarely ends well. But at what point are you gonna stop yourself from continuing that pattern and choose something different? Now, I don't think Mercedes is any better according to you guys. You guys were like, oh, he's even worse than Steph and Dylan. So, woo, yikes. But girl, there's so much heartbreak that these girls go through and it's avoidable. So avoidable. Nobody's saying you can't hang out with Dylan. Like, go ahead, girl, summer of love, live it up. Get your free vacation and get to make out with somebody in the meantime. Like, you know what I'm saying? But if you know you're starting to catch feelings for this person, safeguard yourself. Safeguard yourself by either pulling back or cutting it off completely. Like, I don't understand why she's here like, yeah, he's not giving me the energy that I want. He's telling me different things. I'm feeling insecure, but I'm still gonna go pursue him. For what? For what? But hey, she's 22. I can't. It pains me to use age as an excuse because I know a lot of clued up 22 year olds. Like it's it's just, come on. I feel like it's a deeper thing than age. And unfortunately, this is gonna end in a heartbreak. I mean, we already saw how this story ends. Xanthi just left. Xanthi already invested in somebody who she knew wasn't as into her as she was into him. But okay, let's watch history repeat itself. So in bed, she is watching Dylan like a hawk because he said that um, he wasn't gonna do too much in bed. That wasn't true. So because she was torturing herself by watching him, she wakes up in a very bad mood. I was feeling some rage I think that's telling me how much I actually do slash did like Dylan. Sort of quite comfy in bed together. I made a leap of faith by choosing him. I literally sent my couple home. Yeah. Sophie girl, at this point, you've been coupled up with him the same amount of time. Well, it might've been a little bit longer, but damn near the same amount of time as Chrissy. You don't have ownership over this man. He hasn't made any hard line declarations to say, I'm not gonna pursue anybody else. So stop torturing yourself and and like, stop watching. I don't really like how Mimi positioned herself in this whole thing being in the middle of their situation, but Mimi has been saying, be careful of Dylan. The other women have been saying, be careful of Dylan and you just run full speed ahead. I j Girl, I don't know what to tell you, but. Anyways, we got a short conversation between Sydney and, oh, frick, what's his name? Guys, I'm just going to call him the Eggman, okay? I never write his name down, so I don't even know what his name is. Timmy. Tommy. Lord. And basically, they're on the same page. Now, I don't know what that page is, but they're on it. Your coffee you made this morning was fire. Really? I was geeked. I was wondering where you were all day. Still waiting for a... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. When we speak, we're just so like vibey with each other. Do you like have to get all deep and shit all the time? Nah. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy getting to like just know you and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Keep it chill and just. Trill. Uh... No, I feel exactly the same way. Oh, cool. I'm not getting any romantic vibes from these two at all. 
at all, okay? She's saying, oh, I was looking for you all day. Were ya? Were ya? But yeah, they say they're on the same page. They know what that page is, so good for them. I hope that Sydney actually gets to experience somebody this time. I actually think she's grown. I wanna see, I wanna see what that looks like. I wanna see her find a true connection. The egg boy, I think he's here for publicity, so I don't really take much stock in him finding anybody anyways. Then the episode ends with Sophie pulling Dylan for a conversation and she is just serving herself up on a platter for this man. We were cuddling and kissing yesterday. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to put time into it. If you're not going, if you're just going to put all your energy into Chrissy, yeah. It's not on my intentions at all. Okay, good. Did you see me looking at you last night? In bed. Just sucks that I can't touch you anymore. It's so. Well, I can actually. You can. I can do whatever I want. So if you let me, <laughs> <laughs> I can't have the crazy come out yet. Can you get crazy. Is it bad that I want to see that crazy side? Hey. Looks like I love drama, but I don't. I promise. <laughs> Sophie had been wanting this man to talk to her all morning. Did he? No. Who was he talking to? Chrissy. If that isn't evidence enough of where this guy's head's at, I don't. I don't know what else you need, girl. Like, you saw when he was coupled up with Mimi, he actually tried talking to her. Now that died down when Steph came in, but still, like. He made more effort with her than he did with you. But here she is, she's gonna be like, um, the crazy is starting to come out. And of course this guy is intrigued. Guys love a crazy girl. And as much as they say that they don't, a lot of these guys love a crazy girl. They'll keep saying, oh, my ex is crazy. And the girl before that is crazy. And the one before that is crazy. At some point, you're the common denominator, sir. Everybody in your past is crazy. You like that. You like it. Now, the sensible side of me is like, girl, stop this. Like, it's getting beggy at this point. You don't want to go down this road. The toxic side of me wants to see. Now, how crazy is crazy? Like, how far can this go, sis? I don't want her to do it, but if she's going to do it, I might as well be entertained by it. Jeez. So in the next episode, I don't know if it's a guy that's getting dumped. I assume so, because Sophie pulled... um. Zane and Nico. If it's either Zane or Nico going home, that's insane. That's a literally insane. I mean, Zane can go, but Nico? If Nico goes, Hannah has to walk with him. She has to. I don't know. You guys let me know who could potentially be getting dumped. Who could it even be? Like, I actually don't know who could be going home. Oof. Anyways, as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.